the introduction to understanding drawing organization in lines and symbols. The material in this tutorial was taken from my book, Print Reading for Construction. Hello, my name is Dan Dorfmiller, the author of Print Reading for Construction. Today we're going to talk about how are drawings organized, what do those lines and symbols on the drawing indicate, and how to get started finding information that you want. This is one of several introduction videos on how to learn to read prints taken from my book, Print Reading for Construction. Before we get started, please visit my website at www.printreading.us and go to the book order and video page to order your Print Reading for Construction text, book, and full-length training videos for a variety of units. And always feel free to contact me at dorf at dorfmuller.us and I look forward to hearing from you. Let's get started and how are drawings organized and what is the drawing language used to communicate with the reader? Lines and symbols. We are all used to reading books which are the 26 letters of the alphabet organized to make words and sentences, paragraphs, chapters, ideas, stories, concepts, and it all gets read and interpreted by us, the readers. Reading drawings is much the same way, except we use more than words. We use lines, symbols, and graphics called a pochain to relate that information. The typical drawing organization to construction documents would be as follows. Title page, civil drawings, structural drawings, architectural drawings, mechanical, plumbing, and electrical drawings. Each architect, owner, and engineer may have their own way to organize the documents, but it will be close to what we talk about today, and that's why I always start with the title page. The title page will outline the order of the drawings with page numbers and a brief description of what each page contains. Reviewing this information and becoming familiar with its contents is critical to the success of finding information for the building. Also found on the title page would be a building rendering and a site location map. The title page is a great resource page. Civil drawings are usually the first sheets in the set. They are typically referenced with a C, such as C1 and C2 and so on. The civil drawings show the project information as it relates to the outside of the building. The civil drawings are going to show the information related to the existing conditions, demolition, hardscapes such as concrete, asphalt, and decorative concrete, and also landscaping. They also show the site grading, contours, which indicate both the existing site elevations and the new elevations for the project. Architectural drawings will usually be next, referenced by the letter A, such as A-1, a-2. These drawings represent the core reference point for the project and define all the building materials that are attached to the structure to enclose the space, such as metal studs and drywall, floor finishes, building enclosures, brick, windows, roofing and insulation, and much more. These drawings will always start off with the floor plans. The floor plans are a reference point for all the other information, such as sections and details. Elevations are also a key element of the architecture. These drawings show the key finishes and view of the exterior. Like the floor plans, they are the reference drawings for the exterior. You will also find schedules that will define all the room finishes, doors, and wall types. Structural drawings are the next and sometimes are before the architectural. The structural drawings are going to show how all the components of the building go together and make it stand up. That's why they call it structural. The concrete, steel, wood framing, masonry all go together and work together. The drawings are indicated by S, S1 and S2. The first drawing in the structural set will always be the foundation plan. The foundation plan is the drawing that shows the lowest portion of the structure that supports the building. The following plans are each floor 
up and through the building. These plans are called elevated structural floor plans. They are also used as reference plans to find the rest of the sections and details for the structure. You will also find schedules for footings, beams, columns, and anything else that can easily be put into a schedule. The structure in most buildings is completely covered up by the architecture. M ENP, standing for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing drawings, are all exactly what they stand for and will define how these disciplines are used throughout the project. They are typically laid out on grayed out architectural floor plans. Safe handling of drawings. Never write information on the drawings unless it pertains to the project. Keep the drawings clean. Fold or roll the drawings, and I prefer rolling them backwards so when they lay down, they don't curl inward. Don't lay sharp objects or food on the drawings, and store the drawings in a clean, dry place. Lines and Symbols from Unit 4 in the book. Lines, symbols, and pochain are the alphabet to the print reading language. The basic lines found on drawings are border and property lines, object lines, hidden lines, center and leader lines, and section cutting lines. Border lines define the edge of the drawings, usually the heaviest lines on the drawings. Property lines define the edges of the property lots. Object lines outline the building and the edges of the objects, lighter than the border and the property lines. Hidden lines show object edges behind other objects. Center and leader lines are used to show intersections and refer to notes of objects on the plans. Section cutting lines are used to indicate sections or detail cuts on the plans or elevation. Some sort of reference number is always attached to these section cuts so they can be found in the construction documents elsewhere. The top portion of the section cut indicator could be a letter or a number. The bottom portion is the sheet where the section or the detail is located, as seen in section 3 on sheet A9.1. So go to sheet A9.1 to view the section or the detail. Symbols and legends. Symbols are the graphic indicator of a group of words that refer to an object, item, or something that will be repeated multiple times on a drawing. It's easier to use this symbol to indicate a single pole light switch than it is to say single pole light switch each time on the drawing. These symbols will be defined on the notes page or the title page of the documents in a symbol legend. Pochain or material rendering is also very common on drawings to indicate different types of materials used throughout the construction disciplines, such as concrete, wood, masonry and brick, insulation, steel, as shown on these drawings. The material renderings are also shown in a legend on the notes or the title page. How to find information. First, are you a general contractor or a subcontractor? And the answer to this question defines part in how you approach the drawing review. If you are a GC, then it all applies to you and you care about all the information on all the pages. If you are a sub, then you care about the trade and the specific discipline related to that trade and how other trades might impact your work. In all cases, I start with the title sheet. Review it and understand how the drawings are organized. If you are a sub, what sheets might pertain to your work? Next, I flip through the entire set of drawings. Yes, I mean the entire set. This is especially necessary when you are first learning. I still do it, and I'm frequently surprised what tidbits I discover about the job. As you're flipping through the sheets, tab out the pages that relate to your work or you want quick reference back to. Finally, highlight the information on the individual pages that relate to your work. More on some of this during my upcoming Estimating Unit video. Learning to read construction drawings is first being able to visualize the project, get that mind's eye view, and then being able to interpret that information and build the project. Thank you for listening to this training session, and I look forward to working with you in the near future. Don't forget to visit my website, www.printreading.us, and go to the book order page. 
Each book comes with a variety of drawings, both residential and commercial, along with write-in text. The answers to all the write-in text is on my website, free, with the purchase of a book. A passcode will be required. Just email me at dorf at dorfmiller.us. Remember, if you get it wrong, the building could look like this.